James Bond movies are a rare breed of Hollywood movies where the song, the title song has a life of their own. It is like a full-fledged music video with its own fan following and what is more, they are mostly great, winning numerous awards and all that. The latest one in the long line of Bond title songs is no different, with, with one new caveat. This one comes in 3D. And I guess the title sequence, the music video, is the only place in the whole movie where 3D seems to be useful. Hello, Namaskar, Welcome, Swagatam. I don't know about you, but I certainly never imagined James Bond to settle down and have a kid. How this whole idea of being a family man turns out for James Bond is what we are going to discuss, is what we are going to explore in this episode of Tinsel Talk, where I discuss all the latest and best in the world of movies and shows. As you must have understood, today I'll share my thoughts about the 25th James Bond movie, No Time to Die. Apart from being the fifth movie featuring Daniel Craig as James Bond, it is also his last outing as the iconic character. And this movie is also unique in the sense that this story lets James Bond pass 10 years since the events of the previous movie in the franchise, Spectre, which certainly is the weirdest part of the story. But more on that later. First of all, a little backstory is needed. Casino Royale, the 2006 movie, is the one that rebooted the James Bond franchise and made this spy world more up to speed with the modern times. Daniel Craig was Bond for the first time in this action-filled suspense spy thriller which completely changed how we imagined Bond movies to be. This Bond was more physically active, less reliant on gadgets and the world of James Bond felt more and more grounded in the current world that we live in. No wonder that the reboot was successful and Casino Royale was a smash hit. The wonder, however, was that the sequel, Quantum of Solace, was, for the lack of the better term, shit. But the story of James Bond was carried forward. He was the same person who he was in the previous movie. What I mean is that previously, most James Bond movies were standalone movies, episodic chapters with a common set of characters but completely segregated stories. It actually made less sense to watch the previous movies just before uh, watching the new movie in the theatres. Because at the end of one movie, Bond seems to just about to settle down with a a Bond lady in some island and in the next movie that lady, that island and even that story seems to have forgotten completely. In the new era of Bond, the stories are linked in more ways than is apparent at the first glance. The past is referenced often and the characters and stories remembered and it all becomes an overarching saga spanning five movies. James Bond's relation with Vesper Lind has evidently left him with some personal issues and the after effects of this emotional uh, connection, this, this angle of this character makes Daniel Craig's Bond more diverse than the previous Bonds. Quantum of Solace started right after Casino Royale ended and even though the movie was bad, the story continued. Skyfall, the next movie, was another section of the same story bringing the beloved character of M played by Judi Dench to a conclusion, while also bringing us closer to Bond's own past. 007 reporting for duty. Where the hell have you been? Enjoying death. The movie Skyfall was amazing, as was the Academy Award, Grammy Award and the Golden Globe winner song by Adele. In the next installment, Spectre, James Bond encounters Blofeld, the mysterious, nefarious supervillain with a cat. A movie so hyped that it was predestined to fail to live up to our expectations. We were promised the Thanos of Bond villains and instead what we got was a man so obscured by the shadow and darkness that it was as impossible to see him as it was to like him. What took you so long? Anyway, in the final act of the movie Spectre, uh, Blofeld's grand plan is uh, thwarted, Bond spares his life and gets him arrested before driving off in his iconic Aston Martin DB5 with Madeleine Swann. Madeleine Swann is played by the French actress Leah Sadu and she is the daughter of Mr. White, 
Who is Mr. White? He is a bad guy whom James Bond captured in Casino Royale and who later escaped in Quantum of Solace. This man and I have some unfinished business. You see, the stories of the Bond movies 21 to 25 are intricately interconnected, while at the same time have full-fledged and independent stories to be watched as a standalone movie. With this background, let us finally talk about No Time to Die. This movie is advertised as the conclusion to the James Bond saga, and it is really a conclusion. As James Bond drives into the sunset with his partner Madeleine Swan, he is leaving behind his life as James Bond. When this movie No Time to Die starts, Bond is still enjoying his retirement, enjoying his honeymoon, one honeymoon location after another. Although the Aston Martin DB5 that he took from Q at the end of Spectre is different from the car we see here. The number plates are different. In fact, James Bond's Aston Martin DB5 has had mostly consistent number plates throughout the decades. But this one is conspicuously different. Why? Who knows? But Ernst Blofeld, who at the moment of his ultimate defeat in the previous movie had seen Bond go off with Madeline. Well, there is no way a villain like that can let an opportunity of revenge like this go. In No Time to Die, the plans set in motion by Blofeld before and during his incarceration haunt Bond. The past isn't dead. He is attacked during one of his romantic getaways at the picturesque location of Matera, Italy. With the question, how was Bond's location found and whether Madeline Swan actually betrayed him or not, the settling down phase of Bond's life was over. Why would I betray you? We all have our secrets. It lasted five years, which is really something. Anyway, another five years later, when Bond had been living out his retirement in a lovely home on the amazing beach of Cuba, the world has changed for MI6. Although the villains and their motives like world domination, destruction of peace, uh, revenge and all that, they remain the same, the methods have evolved. But apparently nothing has evolved more than the MI6 itself. With James Bond retired and off the grid, they have appointed a new 007 and a lady at that. I met your new 00. She's a disarming young woman. I get why you shot him. The new 007 is Nomi, played by Lashana Lynch, whom we last saw playing Maria Rambeau in Captain Marvel. Those developments aside, this movie is a James Bond movie. And so, even with the new 007, there is no shortage of the original James Bond. A new villain is introduced in the form of Lucifer Safin, played by Rami Malek. His evil plan doesn't only involve top secret, unstoppable bioweapons, but also manipulation of the mind and heart of his opponents. Lucifer Safin and Madeleine Swan share a history, which makes the really well executed prologue of the movie. With this history, Safin is inherently linked to Bond on a personal level, in addition to being Bond's mission objective to stop. It is Lucifer who actually brings James Bond face to face with Madeline Swan again after they had been uh, separated for five years after Madeline's apparent betrayal in the beginning of the movie. So with this convergence, the pieces are at their places on the board for the end game to begin. Blofeld is killed, James Bond finds out that Madeline didn't actually betray him and is surprised to find their daughter, Mathilde. But that is not the happily ever after ending the story is intended to have. Lucifer intervenes and kidnaps Madeline and uh, Mathilde and then James Bond and the new 007 chase them down to their uh, weapons manufacturing facility where the big showdown of the climax happens with an ending which though poetically profound is also unexpected. The conclusion of this James Bond saga as the trailer promised. But I am not going to spoil the ending of the movie. Let's talk about what is really great about the movie. First of all, unlike a few other Bond movies, this one is not a purely action flick. This one has heart. In the heart of the story, No Time to Die is more a story about love and romance than most other Bond stories. How much you ask? In this movie, James Bond does not sleep with the new Bond girl. The new Bond girl, Paloma. You're late. 
played by the Cuban actress Anna de Armas. Yes, Bond is actually monogamous for a change. But that doesn't mean that the new Bond girl is useless. She is in one of the key sequences of the movie and she is superb. Although to be able to pull off a high octane action sequence of a James Bond movie, I am sure the actress must have had to tape her exquisite dress to her body. That aside, there are two elements throughout this movie which I especially liked. First, the humor. It is expected that Q will be the comic relief of the movie. And the back and forth between the old and the new 007 was bound to have a few tickles, as we saw in the trailer. But the deep and dark humor of someone who has seen the worst of the world for far too long. That is an exotic spice in this recipe. How did that happen? Well, you live long enough. James Bond will crack you up in the most unexpected of situations. The second, again a testament of Bond's age and experience. He does not try to dodge bullets. Yes, you heard me right. Even in the most tense of firefights, James is as cool as a cucumber and he moves with deadly purpose but only when he has to. At least three times in the movie, as far as I could count, he just stands looking forward and waiting while he is being shot at. Because he knows he is not going to be hit. Visually, the movie stands up to our elevated expectations from a Bond movie. Spectre was the costliest Bond movie, but no Time to Die is not too far behind and the expense really pays off in the form of amazing locales, superb cars, cool computers and gadgets and weapons, aircraft and all that and set pieces that showcase the grand scale of the world of James Bond. Honestly, the only down to earth and low key place in this whole movie is the MI6 headquarters. Hans Zimmer's score does this story justice. With James Bond's original iconic theme music, there is much to be liked in the background score of the movie as a whole. The music captures the high octane action sequences as candidly as the heartfelt moments of romance and sacrifice. Jeffrey Wright, whose deep voice we have been hearing as the watcher in Marvel's What If, reprises his role of Felix in this movie. Harder to tell the good from bad, villains from heroes these days. Felix is present shortly just to bring Bond out of his retirement and is given his own piece of obligatory conclusion. Other key characters like M, Moneypenny and Tanner are there to play their parts. Other than Raph finds M, the other characters are just there to fill out the James Bond movie roster, nothing else. M, on the other hand, has a key role to play here as being the naive boss who thinks his secret plan will stay secret or would stay the course he thought out. Obviously, M's plan was hijacked at an early stage, which is what led to the near world ending scenario. And he has nothing in terms of recompense or redemption, other than allowing Bond to do what he was going to do anyways. M's character has no arc, no depth. He is just there to antagonize Bond, say one-liners and explain away his actions. Blofeld was able to organize his operations while in incarceration right under M's nose. I don't know how and why he is still M, he is still in charge. But that is a completely different point. This movie is about James Bond and that brings me to the weirdest thing that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. 10 years are supposed to have passed during this movie. James Bond is visibly older but his partner, Madeline, she hasn't aged a day. That wasn't supposed to be a big problem, but in one scene where Bond and Madeline are reunited and their daughter, Mathilde, is revealed, the age difference of Bond and Madeline is highlighted. Not only is the actor Daniel Craig almost old enough to be the father of the actress Leah Sadu, in that scene, the characters actually look like they are father and daughter rather than partners, lovers. It is weird and, and when you watch it, you can't unsee the fact. Somehow, this is weirder than James Bond hooking up with Monica Bellucci's a character, Lucia Sierra in, in Spectre. 
This age difference is accentuated because of another connection. Madeline's past with Lucifer, well, Madeline was a child when Lucifer first met her. Now she is a grown woman. When Lucifer, Madeline, James Bond and Mathilde are in the same scene, it is eerily weird. This, well, creeped me out a bit. But this is my personal feeling and I would like to know if you found it weird or not. All in all, with all the positives and the negatives, No Time to Die was a fun movie to watch. When you get a chance to watch it in the theatres, please skip the 3D version. That doesn't add anything to the movie experience. Watch the 2D version only. And if you happen to live uh, at a place where an IMAX theater is nearby, well, then you have a treat waiting for you in the IMAX. The locations, the visual story and the superb action all will certainly be accentuated on an IMAX giant screen. But even in a normal theater, No Time to Die is a must watch and I will give the 25th Bond movie a 7.5 thumbs up out of 10. What do you think? Have you had a chance to watch the movie yet? I wanted to binge through the previous four Daniel Craig Bond movies before uh, watching No Time to Die, but unfortunately, uh, those aren't really available to stream in India. While I wait for Amazon Prime or Lions Great Play to bring Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, uh, Skyfall, and Spectre to their library, do let me know your thoughts on the conclusion of the James Bond saga spanning five movies over 15 years. If you like this review, do leave a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends. And don't forget to comment which movie would you like me to talk about in the next Tinsel Talk episode. As always, I am eagerly looking forward to your feedback and comments. This is all from my side for today. Until my next video, please do subscribe to my channel The Versatile Doctor to stay tuned with me and keep the discussion going on the social media with the links in the description box. You have been with Dr. Abhinav Atul and it is my pride and privilege to be able to connect with you through this video. Namaskar. Why you are still on YouTube? How about you check out this video which YouTube thinks you would like? And right here in this playlist link you will find all my Tinsel talk videos.